and welcome. Now, last time I did the battery level indicator circuit, and before that I did the TADA circuit, the TDA2822 headphone amplifier circuit. Now, when I tested the audio board here, I noticed that it was, you know, I had to have the mini disc literally up until max for this to kind of make some sort of sound. <laughs> well, it did make a sound, but it was like fairly quiet. And even when it's maxed out, there isn't that much sound. It's not that loud. So this clearly needs an initial stage amplifier. Now, the, um, the DAC in these is not that great anyway, but still that's irrelevant. I would like the Sid Boombox to have enough amplification to cater to anything you put into it, including an Amiga, which is which has low sound output anyway. Now, initially I wondered, you know, what solution do I use, so forth, but I then tried the Sid Box itself as an input on this, and uh, this has this very same circuit, the headphone amplifier circuit, tada, DDA2822, in this. You know, this is what this uses. And it was perfect. The actual volume levels, everything were perfect from this. Now this time there will be no paralleling two freaking 10 ohm resistors to get a 5 ohms because I've managed to buy some nice 4.7 ohm resistors here. Nice and new. <laughs> Look how fresh they are. <laughs> These actually have a bit of a retro shade of green to them. Do you remember in the 70s those gaudy colored bathrooms <laughs> that you'd get in terraced houses? <laughs> it reminds me of those. Now this screw terminal block here, this is the 5 volts output, which, you know, from this regulator here. And this not only powers this tada, but it's also going to power the one on this board. So I can just take the power from here rather than putting another regulator up. And I'm going to start following the TADA circuit diagram, which I revised last time. One thing I realized at a later stage in this project is that the TDA circuit would benefit greatly having a single stage amplifier before it. Once I had done that, it significantly boosted the audio signal to the point where I had to actually reduce it to balance it out with the power amplifier. That's one thing I learned about the TADA circuit. And the reason why it works so well in the SID box is because the audio signal from the DAC is already quite strong. It's quite amazing what difference a single transistor amplifier circuit can make, depending on where you put it. Now, in addition to the TADA, what I'm actually going to do is, um, if you remember my Amiga stereo separation project, which I did uh, quite a while ago, about a couple of years ago, I originally did this in my teens, <laughs> but I'm going to add the circuit here as well. So this will have, so this boombox will actually have the stereo separation adjustment here. Now the sit box here, now with my logo on it, <laughs> it already has a stereo separation functionality there uh, as a, you know, so I thought, you know, okay, the sit box has it, but anything from the aux input won't have it. Let's say if you want to connect an Amiga. So I thought, you know, let's have it as a variable resistor. Okay, so the first thing is terminal blocks. This is positive negative. These two are going to be extra ground terminals and this is going to be left and right audio. So you know, the audio before it goes anywhere first needs to go through some DC blocking capacitors, which are going to be these bipolar electrolytics. I mean, to be honest, it's no big deal if you use low, if you use polarized uh, capacitors on a low powered audio input, you know, it, it's not that bad. The capacitors are not going to you know, complain. But obviously on high powered AC thing, it's they're gonna overheat and, you know, blow. I mean, polarized electrolytic capacitors, I've seen them used commonly in amplifiers anyway, you know, audio amplifiers. So it really is no big deal.
Okay, so that's now done. I'm actually finished with this. Uh, let's test it now. <laughs> Hopefully everything works well. I followed it carefully and this time I had more space to kind of, you know, do the circuit here. It's, as you can see. Okay, so I've now marked the, uh, the terminal blocks. It's just like that lacquer on top so that the paint marker doesn't fade. And of course I've been consistent with the, the color coding. Okay then, so let's explain exactly what these ports are on this board. Now this one is the power in, and that is 5 volts in, which comes from the audio board. Now here is the audio board 5 volts out, this goes into here. These are just grounds, which you can use for the audio in and audio out or whatever else that needs it. This is the input and that comes from the SID box and also aux in or anything else that's giving audio out. Now this gets amplified here, initial stage amplifier comes out of here. This is audio out again, purple left, blue right. And this goes into the input of the audio board here. So you have input here. Okay, so I've connected everything together. <laughs> um, just to kind of recap what I've connected. Um, the power going into here, power coming out to here, 5 volts. Um, speakers going into here, however, I have not connected the input uh, of this, sorry, output of this to the input of this yet, because I want to do like the first test with just this. So this output is connected just to the speaker here, just to this diddly one. Just to test if it works. Once I know that works, then I will test this. I don't want any damage to happen here. <laughs> you know, if something goes screwy there. You know what I mean? It's... Okay, why is that not working? Okay, that's weird. All the connections are fine. Let's play it once again. It may be because I've got the output as mono. That's, I don't know. I don't know what the freak's happening. Connections are all fine. You freak. I did the wrong connection. I connected both the outputs together. That's freaking why. <laughs> I was quite confused. Basically, I've just like the outputs. I've just connected, you know, two of Two pin threes to freaking both the outputs and pin ones just like flying off into thin air. <laughs> Those were dumb. <laughs> okay, let's just ditch it for pin freaking one. I did also think to myself, shouldn't this be a bit louder? Okay, now let's do this with a screwdriver. Okay, that seems to work now. But okay, so it's definitely made a difference. And also it drives my Sennheiser uh, headphones, which do require a bit of oomph to drive. Not that much, but they do more than any of my other headphones. So it definitely drives these well. You know, I mean, the, without this, it's too quiet in here, in the headphones. Um, let me just demonstrate a before and after this amplifier here. So what I'll do is I'll take the source out of here. This is on volume 20 without this amplifier here. Same volume 20 with the amplifier. Mm. 
Okay, now let's try a cassette <laughs> because you know we've been trying this mini disc um, here, mini disc play here, and it's not the, not the best ones to try. Maybe it's just you know it's not going to line out or anything, so that's why it's not the best one to try. I want I think you need to try stuff with that's got a line out here. So let's just. Okay, this has got no controls. That sounds like it's going to be loud because there's no control over this. Ooh. Okay, yeah, definitely that's freaking out. There's no control over this, so that's pretty. The amplifier is fine. It's pretty freaking loud. It's just that mini chest <laughs> thingy. After, why is it so quiet for? It's this thing. So yeah, I just made it freaking extra loud. <laughs> but actually, that's probably that's probably a good thing because. literally deafening me. I'm gonna <laughs> turn it off now because this has no control. It's just the this has no control on the line out. It's just the line out. <laughs> so it's yeah. But success. <laughs> so we have another successful build here. Very successful build. It's just added extra oomph to the circuit and yeah that's what it needed. Just what it needed. So yeah, next time we continue with the other, with the VU meters and stuff, and I think we're coming close to the brunt of it done. It's just putting it together after we've got the main parts together, so yeah. So that's all for today, now for the shameless self-promotion part. Yep, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more, and also hit that bell icon so you will not be notified. Thank you, YouTube. I'm not going to promote myself too much, I'd rather just say a big thank you for your likes, your shares and welcome you to leave your kind positive thoughts in the comment section below. Being a solo, self-made YouTuber without any advantages or favours from others is extremely difficult, so an absolutely huge thank you goes to my patrons for your support, especially my top tier patrons. Electronscape, Axel Dominator, Rich Garbud, Robert Minis, Aaron Metcalf and Chris Sebelinski. Until next time, I say adios!